Hello friends, my name is Ajay. I'm back in the um, in my normal room today because uh, in the last in the last video I mentioned that my AC was uh, broken, but now everything is fixed, so I'm back in my normal location. In this video, I wanted to go over a really cool app for iOS. If you remember last week, I actually uh, created a video on an app called Pythonista, which basically allowed you to write Python on your iOS device and your iPad. And one of the main problems that I mentioned with that particular app was that you're not able to install third party packages. For example, Pandas, which is one of the main ones that everybody likes to use with Python uh, for kind of uh, data working, and uh, Beautiful Soup, for example, which allows you to scrape uh, the internet for information. All of those type of packages were not allowed, or you basically could not uh, install them using Pythonista. And, and this app that I actually want to talk about today is called Carnets. And basically what it is, is it actually allows you to write Jupyter Notebooks on your iPad. and allows you to edit Jupyter Notebooks, save them on device, and it even has access to PIP and pretty much all of the Python dependencies that you can install through it. So I'm going to be showing you that throughout this video. One thing I do want to mention is that I am in no way sponsored or affiliated by the people who make this or the person who makes this particular app. All opinions are my own. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so this is the App Store and um, I am actually connected to an external mouse right over here uh, through the new feature in, um, in the latest release of iOS 13. And what this allows you to do again is it allows you to connect a Bluetooth mouse to your iPad and that makes it even more like a computer. And you can see that that's kind of the trend that has been going on with the iPads lately anyway. But now you're even allowed to use an external mouse. And when you're actually working, uh, when you're working with things such as cornets or when you're doing coding on your iPad, I definitely recommend that you have a, definitely, first of all, an external keyboard. I am using a wireless Apple Magic keyboard um, in, uh, for the purposes of this tutorial. And also a mouse is very, very helpful because it kind of makes the experience much quicker and much better. All right, so I'm on the iOS App Store and you can simply click on search. And then in here you can type in car nets just like this and you can see that the first option is Carnet's Jupiter and you can see it says a standalone Jupiter notebook and you can see this is the developer who has made this it seems like it is just a person who made this and felt that there was a need and decided to make it it is again very very good so you can download it here and the price is it is free which is absolutely amazing uh any app that I've noticed related to Jupyter Notebooks have, there is one that's very um, also popular called Juno, which is $15, but this one is completely free and there's no even in-app purchases uh, at, as I can see at all. So pretty much everything is available. It is an amazing tool, especially for the fact that it is free. So I'm just going to go and open it up. And when you open it, you're going to see, and I'm going to blur out, these are some of my files, but you notice that it opens kind of in a page that is similar to the Files app. And you see that you have this little plus button on the top right. You can definitely click this, and it immediately creates a, pa a Jupyter notebook, just like this, and it is really, really cool. So for example, if I want to start typing in some Python code, so for example, I can type in uh, print right hello just like that into the first cell I can run it just like how you would on a computer with Jupyter Notebooks you can either click the run button but now there's even if you're using a keyboard for example there is now even this custom uh, bar right over here and this custom bar it has a run button just like so and you can click it and it runs the cell and it produces output just like this Another thing that I can do, for example, in another cell, and when you run the cell, it creates a new one like below it in case you didn't have one already. Let's say I wanted to do some math, so I say that A equals two, B equals A times four, and then I want to print out um, B, div uh, B, let's just say squared. I can also run it, and you can even use the keyboard shortcuts that you would normally use when using Jupyter on a Mac. For example, to run a cell is control enter. It is very, very useful to have all of these features because it kind of makes the experience, especially if you're used to Jupyter Notebooks and working with Jupyter on a computer, it makes it much, much more intuitive to use on a device like the iPad. 
Now, it is very possible also that this is just a web view, which is kind of displaying as it would display on the computer almost exactly. You can see that you have a lot of these features. You have the file tab, you have edit, you have view, insert, cell, kernel, widgets, and help, just like you normally would. Now, another thing is that you can import packages. So if I want to create a cell, and it has the same keyboard shortcuts as on the computer. So to create a cell above the current one, if I click on the cell right over here, I can simply click on the A button and it creates a cell above the cell that I'm currently selected. I can click on the cell and click on B to also include a cell below the one that I'm currently selected. And to just delete a cell, you can simply click on the outside and double tap the D key uh, right over here and it will delete the cell. So for example, let's say I want to import a panda or import panda so that I can create a data frame. So what I can do is I can simply say import pandas as PD. And pandas is one of the things that is actually built in to this particular app. It's built in already to the Jupyter Notebook. So I can simply go over here. I'm going to delete the cell. Again, you can tap on it and click DD and it deletes it. So I'm going to create a data frame. So I'm going to say DF equals uh, pd.data frame just like this and then I need to take in some data so let's say my data will be equal to and I can create a dictionary you can see how easy it is to work especially if you have a keyboard it is almost identical to how it would be on a computer there's almost no difference so let's say I want to include some data let's say I have column a and then I have values one two three in it uh, then I have column B and I have values um, five, uh, four, five, and six in there. And then I have column C in which I'll have seven, eight, seven, eight, and nine, just like that. And so in here, I can simply pass in data and I can say columns. And then I can import my columns, which will be A, which will be C and, or B and C. So now I can simply do DF, type in DF to present output. And when you see control enter, okay, I forgot the actual commas, that would probably be important. So let me go up here and add the commas inside of my dictionary for my data. I can simply do control enter and you can see that PD, is, oh, I forgot to run the import cell. Let's run the import cell so we actually import pandas. And now I can run this. Look at that, you have a data frame in your output. This is absolutely perfect, and people are going to be able to do so many things uh, because this is pretty much Jupyter Notebooks. There's almost no difference at all. You can do everything that you do on Jupyter Notebooks on a computer in this app, and this app, again, is free, which is absolutely amazing. You can't complain it's about a free app, especially like this about any in-app purchases. There's pretty much no drawback to downloading it as well, and um, it is very, very intuitive to use. That's what I have noticed. Now, one of the things that you don't seem to be able to do right now is you don't have um, Git support and GitHub support, as I can tell right now. I may, be, um, I may be missing something, but I have not seen that. And that's something that um, you know may, may come in the future. There are also apps such as Working Copy, which I am going to be reviewing very soon, which actually allow you to kind of connect GitHub to your iPad. That is, I will be reviewing um, working copy in the future, but that is the one thing that I don't see um, in this particular app, but otherwise it is pretty much completely Jupyter Notebooks, and the good thing about this is that since it connects to your, com uh, to your uh, so I'm going to click the back button right over here, you can actually go to the browse folder, and you can see right over here that you have the ability to connect to things like iCloud Drive, Google Drive, all of those things. So you're actually going to be able to run your Python workbooks and save your Python um, or your um, Jupyter Notebooks directly into the cloud and be able to access them. So for example, if you want to uh, edit it on your computer, you can easily do so by putting your file into the cloud. You can access it both on your computer then and your iPad and um, everything will sync. And this is a very, very good thing. And um, a lot of things don't, or a lot of apps don't necessarily um, have this connection, which is why it is very useful. Most of these coding type apps do because it kind of works already with the built-in file app, but it is something that is very useful. Now, the last thing that I do wanna mention when I talk about this particular app, which I think is very useful, is that you can install third-party packages using pip. So you may be wondering, how do you do that? Well, to do it, you're actually gonna do something very similar to what you usually do with Jupyter Notebooks. 
So I'm going to go up here to the top and I'm going to double, or I'm just going to click on the cell and click the A button to add a new cell just like that. So to install something from pip, what you can do is you can simply do the uppercase, or I'm sorry, the exclamation point, and then you type in your command pip. For example, if I say install BS4 to install beautiful soup, I believe I already have done so, so if I run this, you will see that it says requirement already satisfied, just like that. Now another thing is that I can click over here and maybe change this to, I don't know, something like requests, control enter. You can see that requirement's already been satisfied. Uh, I can maybe try beautiful soup. I'm just trying to find something that may have not been installed that I can actually install for you so you can see how it works. There we go. So you can see that generally it's going to, and see you can see here, you're trying to run a very old release of beautiful soup. That's why I install um, beautiful soup or BS4. Let me see if I can type it as beautiful soup for. Beautiful soup for requirement already satisfied. So I'm I'm not necessarily sure if there's anything off the top of my head that I can install. Maybe I can install, um, what is that thing called, dash? There we go. That I, I just wanted to show you kind of an example of how something installs. You can see this as collecting, downloading, just like how you would on a normal computer in terminal um, it, to install different Python packages. And you can see that after a while it will install everything and you will have a nice uh, thing at the bottom. And then you'll even be able to import and use these packages in your Jupyter Notebook. So we're gonna see if we can wait for this to finish. But overall, in terms of the app, it is very similar, almost exact, to how you normally use a Jupyter Notebook on your computer. It is pretty much the exact same thing. You know, there's not uh, that much fancy in terms of um, design and everything. But generally, everything is very, very good. And it allows you to install different things, uh, different packages, and it allows you to do some of the most important things that most people who are using Jupyter Notebooks do, such as things like pandas, matplotlib, scipl, all those things, it allows you to do, or scikit. And uh, definitely, I definitely recommend downloading it and trying it out for yourself and see if it will suit you. If you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. And as always, thanks for watching.